Okay, this is, I think, video number two of the amount the amount of start again. This is, I think, video number two of the aromatic chemistry uh, series, and it's three videos. The first one was the structure stuff. Um, this and the next one, I'm going to look at the uh, particularly the reactions uh, of benzene, um, it's specifically the electrophilic uh, superstition stuff that it that it undergoes. Um, so anyway, straight into it. So this one's going to cover nitration. The next video. Um, we'll look at the Friedel-Crafts acylation. So we're going to look at nitration in this one. Um, in general, the, the benzene doesn't really undergo any any sort of addition reactions. It's a very stable molecule because of that delocalized ring. Um, but it does undergo these substitution reactions. Um, and at the start of both of these, I'm going to just go through what the term electrophilic substitution actually means, because that's quite an important one to, uh, to appreciate, and then actually uh, go in and show you the mechanism uh, and talk about this. I've a couple of quirks um, that you get. I'm also trying a new video thing. Uh, it's got a scroll bar here which I don't really like and this thing in the corner which I don't like either. But I can't get rid of it um, but I thought it might be a little bit more clear but we'll see anyway. Um, so the reaction mechanism is electrophilic substitution um, I think, personally, I think mechanisms are a godsend, really, because the way the mechanisms work is that once you obviously know the mechanism, everything you come across that uses that mechanism is going to be exactly the same. And so I think mechanisms are brilliant from that respect. Um, when you struggle with mechanisms, though, I appreciate that they they they're quite hard, but they always follow the same the same sort of core steps. And I think the important thing with mechanisms is that you understand what the mechanism itself actually means. So the term electrophile is something that so electrophilic tells me that it uh, the electrophile means that it accepts a lone pair of electrons. Substitution is a direct swap. Um, and when I say direct swap, I mean at a particular point in the molecule where one thing is added in, basically, one thing is lost. So there's a direct swap at one particular point. Addition, obviously, is adding in elimination is adding in and taking out but at different points so substitution is a direct swap at one particular point in the, uh, in the molecule in the case of benzene it's going to be I hate drawing these things this one's gone wonky the swap is going to take place often it will be drawn so it tends to be at this carbon here it can be at any of them but the swap will take place at that particular carbon and it will swap a hydrogen with uh, not hydrogen ion as it would ultimately be, with the electrophile. And that's what we're going to go through in a second, is look at what these electrophiles are. Um, in both of these videos, this one and the next one, looking at the Friedel Crafts acylation, it doesn't even scroll down very far. Like, what is going on with this? Terrible. Um, in the Friedel Crafts acylation, so if you have to make the electrophile in both, in both of those cases. So there are equations to show that. Now the reagents that are used to make, and this is, this is the nitration one, so the reagents that are used in this case are concentrated nitric acid. Let me know as well what you think of this new new system, my new, what do you call it, like, uh, what do you call this thing now, like canvas type thing, drawing, software stuff. Anyway, so we've got concentrated nitric acid, and the key thing is this is concentrated, and I've got a couple of questions that I'll show you afterwards, and that's quite important to say. So concentrated nitric acid, concentrated sulfuric acid, we add, we add those together, we react those together, uh, and a reaction takes place, and it forms our electrophile. And the electrophile is this thing here, this is the nitronium ion. Now, in reality, the positive charge there is on the nitrogen, but we can write it in the equation form. We can write it like this. So it forms the nitronium ion. I'll write that down just, just so you can see what it looks like. Nitronium ion. We also produce the hydrogen sulfate ion and we produce this guy here. I, I would call the hydroxodium ion. You can also call it the oxodium ion, but basically this uh, H plus watery type type guy over here. This needs a bit of balance, and the way we balance it is as such. We've got our two SO4s, which is great. We've got two hydrogens there. Two hydrogens, four, five, three, four, five, yeah. So we're all nice and balanced. Now this is the equation I'd recommend uh, wholeheartedly that you 
uh, that you learn. You need to know this. Uh, you can work it out. There are a few alternatives. The one alternative that I used to sort of teach is that you don't have the twos and rather than H3O plus you just have the water molecule. That works. That seems to be accepted. The other option is you, there's a multiple step one I think comes in two steps um, and you have some sort of m uh, middle ground uh, weird HNO3 thing. I don't bother with that. I just think why add more steps in? This is the, the one. This will always be accepted in an exam. So just use this. It's much easier. Um, this is very important because this can potentially, you'll see later on, this particular bit here, including the two concentrates, can get you three marks alone. This will often be asked before you actually get the mechanism because it's the production of the electrophile which is then used in the mechanism. So, now I've got to go up here. Just this bit I don't like about this new thing. I've got to do that. Isn't that just annoying? Maybe I'm just making more of a more of a deal out of that than it needs to be. Who knows? Anyway, the mechanism. Always going to be the same whether it's this, well, for the benzene, whether it's the nitration, whether it's the Friedel Crafts acylation. doesn't matter. It's always going to be the same. And you're going to have the benzene... I can't draw benzene. Benzene molecule, like that. Remember to include the circle in the middle. I would say don't bother with the Kekulé structure. I think on some mark schemes they allow it. I just don't see the point in allowing it. It just seems ridiculous to me. So just don't bother with that. Uh, now in terms of electrophilic uh, substitution, our electrophile, NO2, I would say put the positive charge above the N there. Really make that clear. And our first step is the arrow comes, oh no, oh there we go. The arrow comes from, double headed, comes from the ring, touching the ring is ideal, onto the nitrogen. The next step of this is we have, and this is where it gets, not really confusing, but you've got to be careful. So in the next step, my beautifully drawn thing, now, to start with, I'm just going to show you. Now, if you remember, ordinarily, with the uh, with the benzene, it's C6H6. Each corner has one hydrogen. Well, now we have two things bonded. So we've got a hydrogen, which was there previously, and now we've got the NO2. No longer does it have a positive charge, but what we have to do now is we amend the the ring inside to, to show us where this positive charge is. Ultimately, electrons have been lost from the ring. So what we end up with is this. Now you've got to be quite careful with this. This horseshoe should be centered around the carbon that you're using. So I'm using this carbon, so it's centered around there. And what I cannot do is I cannot extend it beyond there or there, which I have slightly there, but I'm gonna let myself off. It, it's, it's a weird system. It can be smaller, but it cannot be bigger than what they would class as carbon two and carbon six or two and six, which depends which way you want to go around. So it must be like that. And then we have to also include a positive charge. And that positive charge cannot be too close to this carbon over here. So if you drew it over there, it would be wrong. And the way the Martskins often do that, they say, oh, if you have, if you were to draw a line between carbons two and six, it should be basically below it, that line. So what you can see is I've got the horseshoe there and I've got my or the horseshoe, sorry, this with my positive charge in there as well. Now, we want to change this. We want to end up with basically this molecule like... That is terrible. We want to end up with this molecule like this. So we need a reformed ring. We want to get rid of the hydrants. What happens is the hydrants, electrons fall back in there and in reality what happens is we find that we have a the HSO4 ion uh, takes that way that's not actually required for your marks this bit is though so the hydrogen ion comes off and reforms basically sulfuric acid the H2SO4 molecule and the electrons though fall back in and reform the delocalized electron ring there. Obviously those are the two electrons that were initially used to make the bond uh, with the nitronium ion. And the final result here is that we end up with our nitrobenzene. Okay, so we end up with nitrobenzene. Now, 
back in the old specification, they used to talk about the idea of mono substitution. Mono substitution telling me that one nitro com uh, one nitro group has been added in. To do that, you keep the temperature low. It's below something like 50 degrees will uh, allow for mono substitution. If you creep above that, you start to encourage the idea of multiple substitutions taking place. If you add lots of these nitro groups, if you were to have a molecule that was initially something like this, I just like this, this is nothing to do really, well it is to do with this. If you started with methyl benzene and you were to add an NO2 there, an NO2 there, and an NO2 there, what you'd end up with is TNT. This is initially, the methyl benzene is classed old term as toluene and it's now trinitro toluene. And there is a UPAT name for that, but it's uh, what it'd be. Uh, 246, 246 tri nitro methyl benzene, something like that. One methyl benzene, I don't know, whatever it is. Basically, the long short of it is nitro compounds are quite unstable in the, in the sense that they, your explosions, your explosives tend to have nitro compounds, so nitroglycerin, TNT, C4, all of those different things tend to have nitro compounds in them. Uh, and you may actually, you can do this in, in lessons, you can you can get this reaction mixture and you can make uh, gun cotton, which is a, an explosive, and you basically, you partially nitrate cellulose in the, uh, in cotton wool. It's really, really cool. Uh, anyway, mini, mini sort of explosives. Um, anyway, I've done enough talking. This is basically it. This is all you need to know. So, electric substitution, what it is, uh, direct swap, except in a lone pair, this equation, very important. Use alternatives if you want. I would say use this one. And this is actually your mechanism. It's a fairly easy one. There's only going to be something like two or three marks for this mechanism, and I'll show you later on, or in a, in a couple of seconds, what's actually going on. Um, so ignore this. That's just me having a giggle. Mechanism, bam, there you go. Um, look at a couple of questions, and that should be, should be that. Okay, first question is from... June 2014. I couldn't find a lot of sort of very recent stuff, so I've done the best I can. This doesn't seem to appear this topic uh, as much as I thought it was going to. Now what we've got is we've got stage one X is this guy here. It's a a nitro chloro uh, benzene, and what it's saying is uh, we're going to ignore stage two for now. Stage one is the one we're interested in. It's this bit here. So X, compound X can be produced by nitration of chlorobenzene. Give the combination of reagents for this nitration of chlorobenzene. Write an equation or equations to show the formation of a reactive intermediate from these reagents. So basically we can form this by we can form this by nitrating chlorobenzene. It's essentially saying, right, what do you initially do to make the intermediate? Well that's the electrophile, and that's our uh, reagents wise, that's going to be our conch. HNO3 and conch H2SO4. Important that you have the conch, or you write the whole word construct if you want. Uh, in terms of equations, I'm just going to go one equation, uh, and that's going to be HNO3 reacting with H2SO4. Now I can remember that this needs balancing like that. My NO2 plus 2HSO4 minus and my HO3 plus as well. And there you go, three marks. One, two, three, easy. Going on there, so now we're looking at the name and outline and mechanism for the formation of X, that chloro uh, nitrobenzene from chlorobenzene and the reactive intermediate in this question here, 4B3. So the name and the mechanism, well, straight away, don't forget this, people often lose this mark. That's electrophilic substitution. That's one mark and then we've got three marks then for our actual uh, mechanism itself. And this is an important one because they've not given you straight benzene and they often won't. They sneaky little people and they'll often give you uh, slightly different compounds. This is, you're initially starting with chlorobenzene. Note that the chlorine is on this carbon here and our nitro group wants to be on the opposite carbon across. That means that our mechanism has to basically show that happening. So I would keep it in the same format like this. There's our initial bit there. Now our first stage is going to be just like the last, so there's no difference here. It's going to be reacting with our intermediate, our electrophile, the nitronium ion, and then we're going to have our chlorine, obviously still bonded, 
use the space, not like I'm doing because I'm a fool, use the space and make it as, you know, as big as you need to make it really clear. We then have, remember, those two bits formed and we have to, this is not going to be very nice to draw, looks terrible. We have our horseshoe there centered around the carbon uh, that we're, we're using and remember that that falls in Bam, there we go. And in terms of the marks here, we've got ourselves three marks. I believe the marks would be one there, two for the structure, and three if your arrow. And of course, the hydrogen sulfate ion is the thing that actually is, is taking that away. Not re required for the actual marks, though. And that's going to get you four marks. Really, really easy. Not a lot of work there at all. Next question is a very similar one. Just open up all these things shooting everywhere. Um, this one you've got to use your top base. This is TNT, as I showed you before, trinitro toluene or 2 methyl 135 trinitro benzene. Um, that actually doesn't matter. It's just giving you the idea of the introduction of nitration, a little bit of a story. They love, they love a story to AQA. Um, so essentially, we're told that it's electrophilic substitution, uh, and we're asked to ha basically give the reagents initially and an equation that produces the electrophiles. The reagents, just as the last one, are conch HNO3. And you can see the, the similarities in the questions here. There's only so many ways they can ask this. And again, saying that is a three. That's a two. Badly drawn. Uh, our intermediate, or our electrophile, I should say, really. HSO4. Well, I think I've changed the pen size now. It's ridiculous. It looks like I'm drawing with a, like a potato or something. Um, anyway. Equations done, three more easy marks, bam, 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 and then the exact same thing again. This time, again, they're, they're basically saying to you, right, you, you start with methyl benzene, produce four methyl nitro benzene. Well, we would need to, I would suggest, I would just draw it in the exact same way I did the last one, really. The key thing is, we are adding in our, we want to be opposing. So the nitro benzene is going to be at carbon 1 and the methyl is going to be at carbon 4. So it's the exact same principle again. That's a good curly arrow there, look at that. Um, and the the second stage here is going to be nice and big-ish, it's not really that big at all. Ooh, loop it around. Positive charge there. Two things bonded. NO2 collapses in. Don't forget your methyl group, bish bash bosh, three nice and easy marks for our mechanism. And that's basically it, that is the electrophilic substitution reaction uh, of benzene. Just be aware of the different things that could be added as per here. If you've got any comments regarding my new use of uh, background drawing materials, please let me know. Uh, otherwise, I hope that's been some help. Uh, do get on Twitter, um, ask any questions you've got of those, or just like all my things, it makes me feel really happy. Uh, and again, do check out the new website, mrredrinsal.co.uk, it's an absolute godsend. Um, hope it's been of some use, and there you go.